So we are back with another of our Careers Week Career Spotlight. And this time I'm joined by John Stroud. Now you'll have seen his wonderful photography all over our social media channels and everything else we put out. But now it's time to talk to the man himself. John, welcome. Well, uh, thank you very much. Good to be here. Um, so, I mean, as you'll have got from the intro, John is our photographer. We take him out and about on the road, but he he is his own entity. He he goes and works for other clients as well. Um, John, do you want to just give me a kind of an intro as to, to who you are and what you do? OK, well, as I say, my name is John Stroud. I'm a professional photographer. Uh, I started working in photography way back in 1988 um and i've done a few things in between but essentially been a photographer for the majority of that time um i've specialized in the equestrian world now for about 17 years it's incredible to think it's that long actually and uh, i'm fortunate enough as you say to be the photographer for british equestrian which is a very exciting part of my work um i also work for um, several magazines in the UK as their principal photographer. Um, I'm the photographer for the British Horse Society as well. And also from time to time, I work as a photographer for the FEI. So that's the world's uh, governing body. Um, just to add on top of all that, um, I also do quite a bit of commercial photography within the equestrian world as well. So lots there to keep you very busy. Keeps me busy enough, yes. Um, and so, I mean, you talked about sort of the length of the career that you've got, but how how did you actually get into equestrian photography? How did that all come about? Um, so, yeah, dropping into equestrian photography um, wasn't wholly intentional. Um, I have, uh, it's fair to say, an interest in horses. Um, we have quite a few of them here with us at home. Um, uh, I'd been working in some other sport areas, and decided to uh, sort of have a look at the horse world a bit through the uh, through the viewpoint of the lens rather than uh, sort of just being involved in other ways. And I actually found at that time that there was, from a commercial point of view, there were quite a lot of opportunities. And you know, as I was summarising in sort of who I work for, um, you know, there were op op opportunities there to work sort of, as we'd say, commercially, which is um, for advertising kind of clients. There seemed to be opportunities for obviously covering the sports side of things. And initially that was more sort of magazine kind of coverage. Um, but obviously as things have developed, that's now become sort of international federations and so on. So, you know, I dropped into it essentially from a love of horses and then soon sort of discovered that um, it could be practical to make that the sort of full-time um, emphasis on my photography career. Um, and I think the fact that I came from a professional background, a professional photography background into a question, so it stood me, it stood me in good stead early on, rather than just being a um, lover of horses happens to have camera, if you know what I mean. And do you think it's important that sort of the love of the horses and the understanding of how they work? Do you think that's an important part of the role that maybe sets it apart from other areas of other sports photography, for instance? Yeah, I think it is important, actually. Um, having the love of the horses, the love of the, you know, whether it's the sport, whether it's just equine activities, um, yes, it allows you to become a bit more immersed. Um, obviously, Looking at something like equestrian sport, you've um, you know you've got two elements to it. You've got the rider, you've got the horse, um, you've got the you know the bond of some sort between the two. You've got everybody else who's involved. You know, there's a lot of emotion in there, um, and it's very easy to then sort of get drawn right into that emotional side of things. And I think having that love of the horses makes it very easy to do that. You're not just sort of looking in from a, a sterile point of view um you know if you want to keep going in the equestrian world i think yeah that sort of core love of horses and um you know horse equine activities whatever they might be um, i think that really sort of helps and what are some of the your favorite things about the job i mean we've, we've talked about the fact that you know i'm biased you come with us all over the world and do things but what are some of your favorite things or some highlights maybe along the way 
I think for me, the thing that keeps me really going is the variety because um, for me, you know, no two weeks are the same. So um, here we are, we're talking now just at the beginning of March. I've just come back um, just about a week ago from uh, working in the desert in the UAE, photographing horses in uh, the World Endurance Championships. Um, this week, I've got a clothing shoot to do, all equestrian based for um, uh, you know for a feature. Um, other things I've got coming up just at the moment. You know, we're planning in next month. Uh, I'm off to the states to cover the. Um, uh, the World Cup finals for dressage and jumping. It's this sort of constant variety. And for me, you know, that is the highlight. It's the fact that one week or one day, literally one day, I could be on a lovely yard in the, um, you know, in the countryside photographing, you know, hairy coloured cobs with lovely, um, you know, genuine, if you like, normal riders. And I use that term sort of, um, in a complimentary sense um, and the very next day I could be photographing a world class athlete either in competition um, at the yard um, whether at home or abroad and it's that absolute um, variation is the real thing that absolutely you know, that keeps me going all the way through the year uh, okay so well we've talked about the highlights there and what are, on the flip side, what are some of the maybe the difficult bits or the more challenging bits of the job that you come across? It's it can be very intense, and um, again, a good example of that is when we're working, particularly at championships, and you can take in things like world championships, um, Olympic games, which obviously I'm fortunate to go and cover. Uh, anything like that, it's it's very very demanding when you're there, and you have to keep your um, you know, keep your head together, keep yourself uh, fit and aware. We, you know, we genuinely can be working uh, 17, 18, 19, 20 hour days at that. And I, you know, I, I don't say that in any joking sense whatsoever. Um, I wear a, uh, I wear a sports watch for um, some of the activities that I do, and it tracks the amount of sleep that you are getting. And um, when we were at the um, for example, at the Olympic Games, it's telling me that I was getting four hours sleep per night. And this was, you know, day after day after day. And it's it's a funny thing. When you're working in that environment, you do keep going. It is exhausting. You do have to keep your mind on it. Um, the flip side is that once you switch off from that environment, uh, you're out like a light. Um, if I'm traveling long haul, I inevitably always sleep extremely well on the way back um so that you know that that's one of the tough sides of it i guess the other tough side that comes from that is that um with the travel which i absolutely love i spend a lot of time out and about either in the uk or abroad it does mean obviously that's time that you're not spending at home um so i think that's the other thing that's really really important to me is making sure that the you know that um you know work-life balance plays out even though it might not be a case as some people think oh i'm going to work five days in the office and have two days off at the weekend and that's my work-life balance for me it might be a case of working three weeks away every single day and working really long hours but then having something to balance that out when I get back so I don't just throw myself sort of headfirst into yet more work the second that second my you know my feet touch down at home so I guess with that there must be an element of having to be very in control of your diary managing your time and and that side of things being very organized being organized is really key to it um organized in every sense so yes it is a case of everything from diary management um in terms of planning out your workload but also that um whole organized planning side comes into play you know during the work process as well and again going back to things like championships it's knowing where you're going to be, uh, when you're going to be there at any given point during the day. A lot of running around and you know, getting from you know venue to venue, especially when you have things like um, like a 
when it, well, we used to have World Equestrian Games and in 2022 when we were in Herning where there were multiple disciplines and you've got different athletes you need to cover in different venues invariably at the same time or almost at the same time so you need to really manage your uh, you know manage your time um, and even then just bringing down to a single discipline if you've got something like eventing where we're working with our British team riders and you see for cross-country day where all the different riders are going to be going being organized and planned enough to know exactly where you're going to cover each of those riders on course and hopefully getting them at multiple fences which might mean that you're planning to shoot at you know fence three for this particular rider but you know that you've got enough time when they've gone past fence three to run to a different position to get them at you know fence 12 and then you might then work out that you've got enough time to run to a third position so it's you know, there's a huge amount of planning that goes into the process to, you know, then ultimately get what you hope is the very, very best possible result. And what are some of the other maybe skills or qualities that you think you need in order to be successful as a photographer? You certainly need to have, as you know, the, it's an old thing that you need to have an eye for the shot. Um, that is something I believe that can be. Um, can be taught and it's something that can be learnt um, but it is something it, it also does help if it's something that comes naturally to you um, there are lots of uh, within photography there are lots of uh, little sort of gems of wisdom where you hear about um, sort of things we call rules of thirds and all things like that which can help you compose a picture but ultimately um, you've got to see things and hopefully, and one of the things I try and do is as much as possible, see things a little bit differently. Um, I don't really want to be standing in the same place as everybody else. I want to be doing my own thing. Um, I do find that uh, over the years, I've found that people tend to gravitate to where I'm standing rather than me gravitating to where they're standing, which can be, you know, a little bit annoying but that's fine people are seeing something from there as well that's good um but yeah you've got to you've got to be able to plan you've got to be able to see you've got to be able to interpret and one other thing that as a photographer i'm always um i don't know if i'd say a fan of but something i have uh, sort of developed a bit more is i'm willing to take some risks and those risks they're probability rate based risks but it's um deciding not to do one thing for on the basis you could probably get something else that's better by doing something that's a little bit more sort of close to the edge i was gonna say well one probably quite good example of that that people will have seen is the reaction shots that you've got for us uh both at last year at protoni with with yaz when she realized she'd won and also notably Roz in 2018 in try on those choosing to to be in that position to get those reaction shots of them the moment they won and how you know the reaction that people have had to those shots because you took those risks to do that yeah this happened on a number of occasions so the example with Ross is a good one um she was in a very good position obviously at try on to potentially win um if i recall rightly it was only ingrid left to go ingrid Klimbrick of the germany left to go after her um ros had done her round i had worked out a couple of things i was less interested in her shots of her actually jumping the fences uh during that final round although obviously i still need to make sure that i was in a position to get that because it's all part of the story there were the first thing i was looking to was a reaction for her as she came over the last fence um it's quite funny the way that worked out because she came over the last fence, swung around in front of where I was, exactly how I'd planned to take the shot. I was firing off the sequence and then somebody in front of me decided to jump up and wave a Union Jack in the air. For my perfect shot that, I, you know, in my mind that I got for that is Roz punching the air as she comes through and a blurred Union Jack whizzing across in the foreground, which looks absolutely fabulous. Um, I did then think afterwards, well, if that person had just been sitting one more seat to the right, they would have jumped up, waved the flag, and that would have been right in front of Ros's face, which would have been less of a good outcome. But also then after that, um, with Ingrid still to go, I then uh, decided 
not to photograph Ingrid at all. That wasn't within my brief. I didn't need to. Uh, I climbed up to the very back of the grandstand and pointed my camera directly down where I could see Roz with other members of our, our team staff standing there watching the big screen. And I just kept the camera pointing at her. And I then heard that sort of classic donk of a rail going down behind me. I knew that she had then won. I seem to have realized that before Roz did, because I then started uh, taking this great long sequence of photos where Roz just remains motionless with her jaw sort of hitting the ground and everything moving around her. Um, they weren't great as individual photos. They weren't great as a sequence, but it was all a case of thinking about what is likely to happen, uh, you know, what reaction you're likely to get, what I need to be looking at, and what is the story? Because the story there for anybody wasn't Ingrid knocking a rail down. The story was Roz winning, and that was the key thing to actually capture. And again, without going into being lucky enough to capture that on a few other occasions with um, Nick Skelton at Rio doing the same process of not photographing riders purely to concentrate on Nick. Um, and also then when we were in Protoni last year, as you say, um, literally sitting in the dirt on the ground in front of Yaz as she watched the final competitors in the, uh, in the jumping and getting the absolute moment when she knows that uh, she's a world champion. Uh, really, really special moments. And I should also add into that exactly the same thing again uh, with Lottie, Lottie Fry, when we were in Herning, uh, abandoning what, you know, shooting the last riders, concentrating just on the subject where you know the story is going to lie. And it's a gamble. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't pay off. But I also have to say that working with the athletes that we do with, um, with the British team, world-class athletes, then if you're on a pretty good bet that in those situations, you're going to get the reaction shot that you want. Yeah, it's paid off enough times, I think. We've definitely done some good work yeah. there. Um, and my last question is, if we've got any budding photographers here listening to this who have been inspired to, to go and you know try and have a go at this, what are your top tips for them? First of all, persevere. Um, Concentrate on your skills. Concentrate on doing your thing. Don't feel like you have to stand next to other people. Look for things that are a little bit different. Um, and in just simple photography terms, think about your backgrounds. Think about your foregrounds. Just um, you know, just look to develop your skills. And I think that's the thing. I, you know, if people spend the time really developing a style which is recognisable, then everything else then starts to drop into place. There's there's no easy direct route to you know to doing what we do. There are you know I have to be honest. There are in many respects limited outlets for photography. Um, but on the other hand, I'd have to say from that it a question. Um, as a sport is absolutely massive. When you look at the numbers of people that are involved in it in all respects, you know, whether it's from a, a riding point of view, horse management point of view, um, you know, it's an, it's an enormous area and there are lots of things that you can be out there looking to photograph. Uh, and a simple thing of just looking through any magazine, any book, any publication, look at the number of photographs that are out there of horses, look at, the fact that all of those equestrian companies that are advertising use photographs, those photographs have to come from somewhere. And to be honest, there's no reason whatsoever why they shouldn't be coming from anybody else um, who's aspiring to get into this as a career. Uh, so I'd say, yeah, persevere, get your work out there, knock on doors, be really annoying, um, let people see your work, champion your work, but above all, do stuff that other people aren't doing because that that's what will get you noticed. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, John. And as I say, I hope people have been listening to this, they've been inspired and, you know, might now think of photography as a career option for them. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I would say that if anybody sees me whilst I'm out working, um, then by all means, come say hello, ask questions. 
I'm always happy to help out if people have any questions or queries regarding their photography. Um, yeah, just come a, just come a knocking, but preferably not when I'm trying to get that reaction shot of someone about to win a world championship. Yes, and from a purely selfish point of view, please don't interrupt him when he's getting those from my social media feeds. <laughs>